Good evening. Welcome to Plain Talk, a special one-on-one -on -one edition. I am joined in Pep Studio today by a man who really needs no introduction. He's been a Minister of Works, a Minister of National Security. He's led his own political party. He's operated at the highest ramparts on the globe. He's dined with prime ministers, princes, presidents. He's led this country in in the highest we've gotten to in global sports. He is the inimitable Austin Jack Warner. Please, thank you. Thank you very much. Philip, I appreciate your sentiments. Though I, I, I tend, to, tend to forget these things sometimes, but thank you very much. We are going to take a break for our intro. When we come back, Jack and I going at it. Okay, no problem. one-on-one -on -one with Austin Jack Warner. I had asked him a question off camera. He was about to tell his story when I realized that it is a story and I think that a lot of you are going to want to know the story too. So I'm asking him again. How did you end up with the name Jack? Well, I had gotten a government scholarship and I was going to a presentation college. As a young man, I thought I was bright because I'm the, I was the first person to have gotten a scholarship in Longdonville where I, where I lived in those days. And in Form 3, the teacher was saying to, 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 to the class, today we shall do a lesson on the history of India. And I was at the back of the class and I said to him, I said, I whispered, India? Why India, not Africa? And he heard me. He said, who said that? Nobody answered. Who said that? Nobody answered. But then the whole class shall go in detention. In those days, you had that as a, as a punishment. And the tension, you shall write each person 1,000 words on the way of the transgressor is extremely difficult. I felt I was unfair to the, to the class. So I said, I saw. I said it. He said, one of you said, Africa. Why Africa, not India? I said, yes, sir. He said, yeah, you go again. One, one of the jackass. And that's how it stuck. Wow. <laughs> and from then to now, from three to now, that's some 60 something years ago. Uh, has to me. And I said, fine, I, I have no problem with that. Under those circumstances, I'm happy to be called Jack. Wow. Let me tell you something. That, those lines that you got, yeah. the mighty short pants, he was my dean of Form 5 in St. Mary's College, but he was also my English literature teacher in Form 2. And he gave me a thousand lines away oh, the transgressor. Oh, oh. So it's exceedingly so difficult. So and it's common, common. Yeah, we have that in yeah, common. When you said it, I smiled. I said, I didn't know anybody else got those yeah, lines. One thousand lines were. Yeah, I think I left St. Mary's owing them lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to, what I used to do sometimes to write lines in advance. <laughs> so when you come in for lines, I pull up, I pull up the pile and Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are... <laughs> A nice reminiscent. I remember strapping four pens together, those things writing four lines yeah. at the same time. Oh boy, you were, you were, you were a bright fellow. <laughs> Got a lot of lines. And it, it looks like people who go on to make a difference in the world yep. are not the easiest of children in that classroom. They're not easily molded. No. That's a fact. You know, a lot of people realize that the education system that, that a lot of us went through, because that model is breaking now. Badly. Finland has broken the model, and they now have the number one standard of education in the world. And they realize that this trying to get everybody to be one thing is not the best thing. It doesn't work. Okay, no. One size fits all. That doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, we get unnecessary legs. That is true. Huh? How we survive God alone knows. The, the, there was a dean in St. Mary's College who was the leader of the movement against capital punishment. He and all beat me. I get plenty of <laughs> <laughs> I get plenty of <laughs> Anyway, right, we get past the pleasantries, huh? but he is somebody that we need to get a lot of information from. So, Jack, you are Minister of Works and a Minister of National Security. Yep. What you thought of the handling of Tropical Storm Karen? Well, I 
But I, let me say this. For one, it was much better than it was on the last occasion when that floods in our pool and people were marooned and so on. But even then, I felt that they should have done more because I do not think that the information that they were given was reaching the people who needed it most. And that's my problem. The problem is communication. How do you communicate with people and tell them what to do, what to repair? And I, I, I had a problem with that as such. The storm, it became a storm at 5 a.m. according to the Miami Met Office. Yeah. And the first Trinidad heard about it was a release put out at 9, followed by the Minister of National Security at 10 o'clock. That was, that was ridiculous. That's I mean, that's a four, a four he could have gone live. We're live, we, we in a time now where you are a minute away from communicating right. with the world. That's right. What, why did it take so long for them to be able to tell the people that this was happening? Well, not the natural... And what is now acceptable, lethargy on the part of training agents. That happens. No big thing. Because of training and so on. These are the kinds of things you hear. And therefore, I'm not surprised that he came on at 10 o'clock at all. And then he must bear me also too that that was the morning, I believe, his prime minister was leaving. I'm quite sure that took precedence over his um, press conference. And therefore, that is where we are. Prime Minister, as you say, that was was absent for that event for Republic Day and unnecessarily so because he's still not yet ready to. He's not. He's still not to speak yet. He's 116, yes, I think, yes, to speak, yes, yes. and that's a couple of days from yep. today. So why was he not here? Well, I, I'm not surprised at either. The Prime Minister has a pension for travel. In fact, he has, I think, has approached almost 30 overseas travel so far. And, and ironically enough, his Minister of Finance has only done one. So it tells you what he's like, his travel, his golf, and so on. These are the things that he likes. And the, the country knew this long before he became Prime Minister. So I'm surprised. I mean, for him, for him, his ministers, he believed, can handle the storm, can handle the public day, and any, and any other things. But he is going there for a week almost. And he's going to speak way, way down the agenda. It just doesn't make sense. Look, in England, a court ruling against Boris Johnson. What did he do? He jumped on a plane and went back home. Of course, a bit chastened and so on, but he went back home because that was his priority. That was important. I don't know if the same thing happened here. If I find myself would do that. You think that he thinks that he is unnecessary to the process? He, you know, he believes that he's above the process. It's not unnecessary. He believes that he can stay wherever he is and direct the process by remote control. By remote control. By remote control. Does not understand that this is an age today where the things things don't take two and three days. As, as no, they change quickly. Quickly, quickly. Today, this means you say something, and you could hear it in New Zealand, thirty seconds after. That's yeah. why the world has gone. But he hasn't come to terms with that as yet. Something like a tropical storm, though. I mean, I, you would have thought that he would have understood he should have been present for that. And especially where Tobago was the one in the forefront. Look, Tobago has been ravaged by bad decisions on the Prime Minister. The sea bridge has been a disaster. And therefore, the, the storm is coming now for him to, to have a chance to, to show his, his kindness and his, and his heart, as it were. And he's not there. Because, again, for him, Tobagoans are taken for granted. And why should he be there? Though he knew beforehand that the bigger would be hit first and heavily. As, as, as a Tobago boy, you would have expected from Mason Hall. Like Mason Hall was hit hard, I, I was told. Uh, very hard. Very hard. Mason Hall and, and some other outlying areas. But the Prime Minister was not there. And I want to tell you, actually, also, too, but as I said, his other two ministers, uh, the, the, um, I don't even remember one is uh, Webster, Webster Roy and the Kojo. Kojo. Yeah. Where were they? Where were they? I, I, the government that you are part of, the People's Partnership. If, and I have to, I have to make this analogy. I have to make this comparison. The country would not have accepted any of that. No. The, he and his now attorney general and his marching band, they would have been up in arms for every single one of those my, things. My friend, you, you, you better believe it. In fact, the things that Dr. Rowley has done to this country. Had Kamala Pusaki Sessa attempted even half of them. We were she, a, she violence. Had, definitely, definitely. Because we had gotten we had gotten the threats of violence. We had gotten to we had gotten to union leaders. I remember standing there and listening to a union leader making an analogy about birds fly high but come down to earth to mm, die. That's right. If somebody had said that would that would be sedition now? That is sedition. That is sedition now. Yeah. He, he they they've because I want to ask you something, eh? 
you've been on on the firing line every blogger every mm-hmm. every political activist mm-hmm. have taken whatever shots they wanted mm-hmm. taken aim at you and through it all mm-hmm. but I'm here I've never heard uh, of you issuing a single pre-action protocol never, letter. Never. I never did. I responded to many, but I never did. Because I, 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 you hear me, I am in love, I am there, freedom of speech. And of course, you, people don't have to be excessive in what they do, but in any event, nothing anyone has said so far has hurt me personally to the point of sedition or pressure protocol letter and so I don't do that. Let people talk. And sometimes when they talk, you will learn something. Sometimes when they talk, you ignore them. But let them talk. You think that this government has dictatorial tendencies? Oh well, sure. You're asking a question, you have to give some answers. No. You see, I mean, I have my opinion, but but especially this, this penchant for draconian yeah, laws. Yeah. All the laws. Eviscerate civil liberties. All the laws pass so far. You look at them. Not, yeah. You look at them and see for yourself. A trend. Uh, uh, very much so. If Carlos Phillips were here today in person. The Republic Order Act. Republic Order Act. He would say he's, uh, he's an angel. He's an angel. I can't believe that the PNM that marched in circles for all of these things that they said were violations under the People's Partnership came and did worse. That, is, that these, these 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 laws, all of these laws that have no bail and 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 draconian, draconian. it's just removing rights from people. And yet our justice system, according to Vernon de Lima, mm-hmm. one of the most respected jurists, he said. We are locking up people on attempted murder charges, a no bailable That's offense, it. in a country where the system cannot handle more than 15 murder charges a year, murder cases. Yes. So we are automatically sentencing people to years in jail. 10 and 15 years. There are guys in, who are in jail today for 15 years or more whose cases have not come to the court as yet. And in fact, you will observe this that. is remand yard. That is correct. And you will find that many of them, when they come to court eventually, they are acquitted. So you ask yourself, how, how do you repay how, that? How do you pay the, the, the 50 years I've lost in their lives? How do you? When I was minister of, of uh, books and transport, the first thing I did was to open the bus route by eBay. Because I felt, it, I felt that the, the corridor, the decent mail couldn't have the traffic that, that from the corridor that you have when people living there. I might open it. Then I opened the, the, um, the bus route for people. There was a, a national, I mean, better fresh air as the people because they, they were free. I said, next thing, let us put a court in the remand yard. Philip, I said so for the last 10 years, put a court in the remand yard so you could try people there. Just on, on time. On time. But they know they didn't do that. Instead, they want to have vehicles transporting people all over the country. Hundreds of millions of dollars. $250 million a year. And that doesn't count the police vehicles that are that are going with them back and forth. Nobody wants to listen. Because you know why? People have vested interest in keeping things as they are. When you say that, and you say people have vested interest in keeping things as they are, and I look and I see some of the things that have been done and said to you, and I look at some of the other people that are getting away with things in China, and I wonder why and what's the difference? Why would you be vilified and others who are doing things that, I mean, there are people in this country, there is no way to explain their wealth. I know one family that owns close to a billion dollars in property, Mm -hmm. and there's no way to explain that, and there's nobody asking the question. And they won't. Because everybody has a, has a piece of the pie. There is nobody in this country, nobody, who could point a finger at me and say that I stole, attempted to steal anything from this country or this government. I have some problems with FIFA that FIFA brought upon themselves, which I have to which I shall resolve. But the, and I, I, I maintain, I am still, of course, innocent. But the part this country is concerned, there is nothing. But they'll verify me. You know why? One reason being, I stand up for what is right. Regardless, I am relatively independent. I don't depend on handouts from, from people. I oppose at all levels, newspaper, political party, on the platform, wherever. And I say what they say things as I see them. You will never find me pandering people. That's why Rowley is not my friend. And that's why he will go to, to his cabinet post cabinet meeting and vilify me and so on 
and I be just smiling because I know today is me, but tomorrow is he. So I have no problem at all. No problem at all. Why would you still want to give so much back to the country? Then? You know why? My children, why aren't you fed up? No, I, I've come close to that a time and stop, and, and I went back to my original morals, not being fed up. Because my children were born here. I was born here. I will die here. And I feel I have a, a stake in this country to make it what it should be. Nowhere in the world would a country have the kind of resources we have, have Philip, and be as poor as we are. And poor is only for some and not for all. Not for those on top here. No country. Look at the, look at the, look at the kind of windfall we have had over the years. God has been good to us. Why is this country so poor? We are, are bigger than Singapore. We have more resources than Singapore will ever have. What's the difference? And when you, when you see those things... When you compare our 22 billion US GDP to their 322 billion US GDP, it doesn't add up. At all. At all. When you realize that we have 1.4 million people that we can't manage, I mean, you and I, the traffic to get here was ridiculous. So we can't manage 1.4 million on an island almost two and a half times what the people of Singapore, they have over 5 million people That's and right. they manage their country. I was... How is it that this Trinidad and Tobago, why is it that this Trinidad and Tobago can continue year after year to be so broken so that nothing works? Why but is... The garbage collection. I was in Singapore. I was in Malaysia for a month. And then I crossed the bridge into Singapore. I spent a week. I tell you something. I have never seen a better one country. I've never seen such discipline, such cleanliness, such sanitation as I've seen in Singapore. I look at the economy. I look at how and, and see. I spent the time in the, in the parliament watching them conduct, conduct, conduct them, their, themselves. And I'm telling you, I was shocked. And for a country that like Singapore, we could have been in Singapore of the Caribbean, of the Western world. We could have been. But we could still be, though. Yeah, but not the system. I mean, we've lost a lot. And not really system that's here. No, we can't. But... I keep asking, and I'm hearing other people asking now, where does the money from our pitch lake go? China. You're asking me that, I'll tell you. How, how does China come to own our pitch lake? In so far as they, they have, uh, there's an agreement, I'm told, where so many thousands, hundreds of thousands of barrels of pitch have to be sent there annually. That's what I'm, I'm told. But how, yeah. so I just want to know, why would China have control of our pitch lake? Good question, David. Philip, good question. And they when you have to ask the guys at the high level and all you guys like you who have to go and get FOI and thing and get something answered because in this country today the only way getting correct answers is through FOI. But the amount of money, if you're talking hundreds of thousands of tons of pitch yeah. leaving Trinidad and Tobago, pitch has a value. That's right. Where's that money going? I don't know. Who's getting that money? I, I can't answer. Why aren't we monetizing downstream of the pitch lake? There's so many different applications that could have been. Trinidad could have been on the world map just for pitch. That's right. That's what we were discovered as. That's right. Pitch. So what are you? You remember? So why aren't we still on the world map as the principal supplier of pitch to the world and pitch products? Look, go one step back one. We had sugar here. You were at one time a leading sugar producer. That has, has gone. We had oil here at one time. We had so many windfalls in the oil. That too has gone. We had one time here a train government railway going through from Paul Spain to Separia to Rio Claro to Jiham Junction. That too has gone. We had pitch. Pitch too has gone. And all those things have gone under one government, the PLM. Isn't there some the kind PNM of that met, that? The PNM that met all the companies that were merged and nationalized to form Petrotrin. That's right. The PNM that took over Tate and Lyle to make Carney Limited. That is correct. The PNM that 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 destroyed the cocoa industry. That is correct. They still have no functional cocoa and coffee board despite mm -hmm. the world clamoring for no Trinitario. Trinitario cocoa is the best in the world. Best in the world. We have the second hottest pepper on the planet. Nobody's monetizing that. The, the number one use for that amount of Scofield units is for pepper spray. We don't monetize that. Trinidad and Tobago has the second best regarded honey on the planet. Toco honey. I'm not hearing anything no, about no. that. But they buying a plan in Toco to build a port and on the windward side of the island that will forever like the hotel in Tobago Magdalena Grand that will forever mm -hmm. fall apart from sea bass mm -hmm. the lack of vision, the lack of common sense, I don't understand the ease with which it is sold to people it is deliberate and it's sold to people you know why? 
because this country is polarized. Indian on one side, African on the other. And people who have independent views like you and so on in the middle. And the fact is, is the middle growing? The middle is growing, but the middle is not brave. The people are not vocal. The middle will not stand up and be counted. So why are they going? Why? Because of fear. Everybody fear of what? They fear of, 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 of victimization. Of victimization. That's what they fear of. They fear of losing a contract here or, or a promotion there. They fear of this. They're but nobody. they're not seeing that while while they're defending of their whatever little pittance they have, that the entire ship of state is sinking. Yeah, but they always they always have the belief that it, once it sinks, and I don't sink, it's okay. So so, they, so half a boat could sink, and, and the half right. that I own won't sink. But that's the belief. Because how do you address address the, the question that we have? Those issues we are seeing today are quite glaring to us. How you address an issue where the Prime Minister can go to Australia just so and buy two boats and nobody has a question? The 13 boats that we have right now yeah. still not functional. That is correct. How you, how you could do that? How, how does he supersede the board? How does he supersede the board in the Port Authority? How does he take over the responsibility for the sea bridge? Nobody has any questions. Who do you report the Prime yeah. Minister to in a country that with, without a system? What, what are we left to do? Riot? Hell. That is what Call Member said, that yeah. he could he will keep raising the price of gas till we riot. And he knows that. He knows that. He knows that. And he's correct. The last time Trinidadians rioted, we burned down the Red House. That was in 1837, 1839. Yeah, that was 200 years ago. The water riots. Yeah. No, we, sorry, 1939, sorry. We still have, years ago. But, but we still have no water. Yeah. 50 years now, I have, I have, I have a clip in. 1962, that saying water will be will be um, increased in quantities that the whole nation will have water. 1962, I have a question. 57 years later, it's worse. I read when the Minister of Public Utilities say that water is like a plane, and if you don't fix it, 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 it will collapse. I told him it's not a plane because a plane could take off. Water has never taken off. And the fact is this, that water will not get better. And I'll go further to tell you, water, health, um, it must take on Wasser family. Before you I go ahead, I'll, I'll let you go back down that road. But Wasser, how is it that Wasser could tell the public not enough rain, reservoirs low, too much rain, res pumps break down? Yeah. So there is no condition under which Wasser could actually do its job? And I'll go further. Even when you have plenty of rain, there are no storage facilities. None. None. Where's the water? The retention ponds that we suggested underneath the Brian Lara promenade that could run from the cathedral to the Hyatt mm -hmm. could hold millions mm -hmm. of gallons of water. It would it could be used as a storm break in case of flooding in Port of Spain because there's, there's only one problem there. You suggested it. And therefore it's bad. It's wrong. It will never happen. Because they they have they have the You know you know my best memory of Jack Warren. I'll tell Jonathan Vega this. I as a social media blogger, I would Take, I would go at Jack Warner with both barrels blaring. Mm -hmm. And when I was the head of the Diego Martin Redevelop Development Committee, and we, we wanted to solve the problem of the traffic going into Diego Martin on an afternoon, because I was living in Diego Martin at the time, and the average person spent three hours because traffic backed up from four o'clock all the way to the Hyatt. And I remember I had one meeting with you, yep. and you what? picked up the phone and called in the director of highways, right. an engineer, a permanent secretary, a communications person. You right. ask one question to the room. Will this work? And they pondered it and they said, "This it looked like it could work. The next meeting was held on site. Those were days. Ground broke in three weeks. Those were days, man. Ground broke in three weeks. Everybody who lives in Diego Martin, no, West Morris, anybody who gets home on an evening before 6.30, 7 o'clock, it's because Jack responded. And I want to say this. This government that is in office now is so thin-skinned. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You can't even criticize them, but you can't do that. Even where they're wrong. You can't do that. You can't do that. And so many of them are the wrong. The country feels like a banana republic yeah. now. But can't we? No, but it really feels like one now. It feels like we have dictators now. It feels like, because I've seen the worst side of things in this country now that I, I, I could not believe that institutions of state could so quickly become so Orwellian. I feel like this is Animal Farm. It, it, it is. It is. And I, I tell you again, what is sad for me 
that so many people are staying quiet. There's no national outrage. How could there be, again, eh, again, I want to ask this, how could there be an attorney general hinting that the police wants to talk to the current opposition leader because she may have tipped off Marlene McDonald, yeah. but Keith Rowley, who admitted to tipping off Nazim Bash, police don't want to talk to him? No. How come? How, how is it possible? And I'm asking you, because you've held... You've held senior positions in this yeah. country. How is it possible that his defense attorney in a matter where he is named as material to a fraudulent act AV oil against Petrotrin, how does his defense lawyer also act as chairman of that same company, company himself to himself? In any other country, you would have riots for just on that alone. On that alone, but, but Michael Kwamena is an attorney. Yes. Don't they have a code of ethics? A convenient one. A convenient one. Why is the law association not touching things like this? But more than that. The law association that wants to pull down the chief justice. Okay. Why are they not touching this? Because see, that for, for them, this... Briefs? That's definitely. Briefs? That's definitely. Definitely. Briefs. Who gives the briefs? The, the AG. Who gives, gives the briefs? The AG. And therefore, why should you... Uh, I, I mean, bear the cat. Why should we rough the, 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 the boat, so to speak? They aren't going to do that. They won't go further. What we are discussing here today is nothing new. Why can't the media association, the Fort State, why can't they pick it up and run with it? Why? Why are people so quiet? I think this organization that has found itself in government, I don't want to say hijacked, but I, that found itself in government, I think that they put things in place to protect themselves. I think that the media is owned and operated by people beholding to the gang that is in power. I think that they've also done well. We have members of parliament, financiers, ministers, bedding, journalists, and and, and, and talk show hosts. That, so and, literally, and there was a time, literally there was a time where the Express's number one um, political columnist was the girlfriend of the Minister of Communication. I mean, that was ridiculous. That's another example and of secret. himself to himself. But they don't care because not, uh, they know that nothing here is a secret. People know. People talk. But they don't care because they know that tomorrow when they face the polls again, right, Indian vote in one side, African vote on the Are you side. saying that we cannot break that? I uh, don't want to be a now that, now that we have social media so that the, so that the powers that be can't control the narrative yeah. because that's what they're having a problem with. Eh? That's right. They're having a problem with the fact that they can't control the narrative. The people are free now to speak out. Yeah. So they're looking for laws to find a way to silence people from speaking out. The cybercrime bill is a yeah. ridiculous example of overreach. Mm -hmm. The Sedition Act <laughs> does not apply. <laughs> and when Trinidad and Tobago became an independent country, when we became a republic, our 1976 constitution does not allow for the Sedition Act. And I ask, why didn't they just fall away, but apparently those laws can't, that you have to actually go and okay. strike it down. That, that, that's right. That's right. So we're carrying all this legal burden that that, that dictators could go and find they and use. Have gone. They, they have gone. They're using it. How many times has George Young referred to incidents and said that is sedition? I have completed five times so far. The first person that used the word sedition to me, I did not know what I said when I went to the PSA protest. And I said, was a young Syrian financier of the PNM. And I am half Syrian. And one of the things that dogs the Syrian community is the notion that some of them are involved in illegal drug trafficking that is, that is, that is. and that, that money laundering. Yeah. And, and um, he said to me, he said, no, we have people now for that and we have lawyers now for that and, and we're going to use the sedition law. And that was... That was in 2013, <laughs> long before this PNN came to government. And only then, only since then, have we heard they've been looking for ways. They wanted to use sedition against Devon. They wanted, I mean, they've been looking for ways to test the water. Mm -hmm. Trinidadians cannot sit idly by and accept this. But are, they, are, they not, are they not doing so? They're doing just that. I ask you again. Do you think Justice Ipasad will strike it down when it gets in front of him? He Do you think that he will strike it down? Because I, I'm asking... I, I, I believe he will. And, and I believe he should. His track record is he's a... Such as that. 
I, be, I believe that. But you'll never know. But I believe he will, and I believe he should. Right? That is that is a is a is a, is a law, a bill that should be moved from our statute books. Should be moved. It came at a time when we were all colonials, right? And therefore the British government and the Queen and the King and so on didn't need to have us. No, but I had Wayne Sturge on this show and Wayne said that the difference between the Sedition Act of nineteen oh two and the Sedition Act of now is that the government under Eric Williams tinkered with it and they removed the requirement that it must be a propensity to violence. Mm -hmm. That's not there. So that in the actual Sedition Act, the Sedition Act is the only law that does not describe itself or what is actually... Sedition. Sedition. Yes. So it doesn't say. Doesn't so you could be charged with something it's a, it's a, that nobody knows what it is. That's why it's a kind of umbrella as well. Catch all. Catch all. Catch all. And therefore, because of that... Kate Rowley said we needed to keep peace among the peoples, among the races. Didn't they give Crow Crow a national award yep. for singing tribal, racist, divisive calypsos? Mm -hmm. So so why wasn't Crow Crow tried with, charged with sedition? We instead said there are no, it's, there are no statutes or limitations. So for all those racist, openly racist... I put on that. Hans attack on Kamala in Mayaro a couple of years ago at a political meeting when he talk about, of course, the police and sticking the heart like targets in the heart and whatever and so on. That is the worst effort from any politician, but he's still in the AG office, he's still in the cabinet. So what, what, what's the difference? But they use the, the, the act conveniently when it suits their purpose. That's all. And even you, I say this to you here today, you are one of the few brave guys outside there. But I can't, I can't count 10 guys, and this is not meant to, to big you up, Philip. I can't count 10 persons in this society right now politically and otherwise, who are brave as you are. I can't. And you are a young man who have a, a, a lot ahead of you in years, I think, and I ask myself daily, why are you fighting so? Because you know why? Almost it's a losing battle. Same yes. reason. That's right. My children born here. Thank you. I born here. Right. I don't want to have to grow old and die in a next man land. Right. I know my country. I know Trinidad and Tobago. I know the shortcuts. I know the, my grandfather who came here from Syria. In his last days, he used to stay off into space. He would tell me, I was very close to him, and he used to tell me he ended up spending some of his childhood in Cuba. And there's this song by, I think it's the Merry Men. And in the song, Cuando Sali de Cuba, and the other line, he said, It is the dream of every man to walk where he used to run, to return to the land yeah, of, his birth. of his birth. That is the greatest heartbreak for a yeah. lot of people, to have to leave behind. And I know a lot of our foreign-based support, they tell us that they're living in first world countries where the, the buses run on time, where there's water in their tap 24-7 and still all their dream is to come home. Yeah. That they want Trin and Tobago functional. You think if Trin Begonians realized in sufficient numbers that there is a reality that there are enough people that can make this when country a first place? They come back in droves. No, I myself almost. Early. If you go to the subway in New York, for example, on any Monday morning, any morning, more than two million people will pass through the subway on a Monday morning. We have one point three here. And we can wait, not even for a day. Not even for a day. What is what, what is so wrong? Which system here works? You tell me. I, I mean, I, I'm going, which system that you know here works? Tell me which one. If you give me anyone. There's one thing in Toronto bigger that works. Mm. The wrecker. Oh. <laughs> we'll take a break. When we come back, we will continue with Austin Jack Warner. Make a toast for your mother. A toast for your wife. A toast for your food. Seal, seal, seal. Boddington and Associates Optical is offering free eye testing along with 50% off all frames and 30% off all lenses. Boddington and Associates Optical, located at number 17 Kearney Savannah Road, Chaguanas, and 11 McBean Road, Coover. Info line 671-5342. Call and book your free eye testing today. 
Boddington and Associates Optical, helping you see the way. back i am of course with jack warner so if you're seeing the second half of the show stop start from the start because you don't want to miss what went on before this but we have some other interesting things to talk about and i wanted to touch base on of course petro chen sure. you know again before i even go to petro chen let me go to where petro chen was if kamala posad the sister, had sent home 6,000 workers, had shut down Petrochin, and had said that, listen, I'll pull you off. <laughs> Roger would have committed this ritual this sacrifice. This Harakiri and down. This country will burn. They'll burn. Mm -hmm. But here you have a prime minister, gives him 30 days, he shut down Petrochin. Though he said a month before, that Petrochin, it was profitable. Not close. He said not close. But he said it was, Espinier yeah. said it was profitable. Yeah. Franklin Khan said if, if Petrochin doesn't close down, it'll destroy the economy. Right. We had those two conversations happening simultaneously in the media. Then the Prime Minister qualified it and said Espinier meant outside of the debt of Malcolm Jones and the gas to liquids and the yeah. ultra sulfur diesel, whatever, low sulfur diesel. And then we sold that to Nikwan yeah. for, for change, for dust. And, and, and Nikwan now is getting to operationalize that same plant <laughs> for more peanuts. But, so, but we couldn't. The state couldn't. So we lost $7 million. Is this bait and switch? <laughs> Are they just using the treasury as their own trough? It's a, it's, it's a, it's a piggy bank. I repeat, I'm going back. So you buy, you bank. wanted to buy, if you want to buy a plant, buy it through Petrotrin, fail it, yeah. and then take it as a cash That's surrender it. price, That's and it. then you operationalize. That is correct. That is correct. And I ask you again, where is the trade union? Where are they quiet? Why are they so quiet? Where are they? But, but it, really, it, it, it looked like a deal was made beforehand because I try to understand. And, 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 and certain oil field workers making noise that we're asking these questions. Eh? But how could you sell the public's asset, Petrotrin, without consulting the public? OWTU seems to think that they are the only voice that needs to be in this conversation. That, that's the sad part. That is, but that is that that's is the sad part. But that's the wrong point. Absolutely. Because even if the public, whoever whoever buys Petrotrain or leases Petrotrain, those same workers would have jobs. So it doesn't make a difference that it is Ansel Roger and Ozzy Wolf and who you still have to go back whoever. to the OWTU whoever. workers. The Bio Wolf and the only bid I have seen the details of is the Bio Wolf bid, and that bid up front is plenty more money than we are going to be getting from this patriotic. I mean, there's such a ridiculous name. They slap together a company and name it patriotic <laughs> to say what you are against patriotism. Come on, they're playing us now. And I tell you. They're playing the people. That was that decision. Pretty damn. Purely political. It has no other basis by being political. It has not it has no economic basis. It's political. And I and I, I know that by saying so I offend some people, but then so be but it. But Roger never run a rum shop in his life. How we can run an oil company? At this time in global terms. We, we sell oil on the, the, the and the global price for oil declining and so on. How do you do that? Where the world is, is, is this same United Nations conference that, 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 that Keith Rowley is rushing to speak at, one of the number one issues is turning the world away from carbon emissions yeah. so that our oil is eventually going to come out of popularity. We need to face all of that. We need to identify what is the next step for our industry. How could we sell? And oil, our oil refinery, to a company that promises a seven hundred million dollar upfront payment, and then give them a moratorium on a the upfront payment. How do you get a moratorium on an upfront payment? That seems to be an oxymoron. But 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 what's it? After three years, the moratorium of three years, and let's just say the company is not viable, as it will not be, and the guy used to walk away, then what? You're dealing with people what do you do? who have nothing that you could seize. Nobody's putting any bond. Nobody's creating any opportunity for you to say that there are guarantees in place to protect nothing. Nothing. 
and we're supposed to keep So it's just talk. I, I promise you seven hundred million dollars, but I, you say that if it's not viable, I ask, what if they run it into debt? Who is going to pick up that debt? Let's go ahead. Who? Decommissioning a plant right. costs millions of dollars. Who is going to have that those bills? What's going on now with AV oil investigation? What happens to that? What's going on with the twelve, thirteen billion dollars lost over the whole Malcolm Jones Malcolm fiasco? Jones. What's going on with that? All that's just lost. That, that's lost. That's lost. And by worry, this is PM country. In this PM country. Philip, why, why worry? Nobody. Is this, but, but is this a real PNM government? Do I say that question for a reason? Eh? Because barring this little, and I, I see this as an election gimmick. It is. Because Ansel Roger and Patriotic is not going to be able to operationalize that refinery in the way that the workers who are being hoodwinked again believes is going to happen. If it is not profitable, they have nothing to get. Sure, yeah. Nothing to get. And now they had a march against themselves. That's right. Comrade Chairman. That's right. Behind for, behind, for, behind for an interesting period after this. The next couple of months shall be very interesting in this country. And I would look to see how people would treat would, would take what's happening to your country and how they take it in stride. Will they become vociferous? Will they speak out? Will they start to march? Will they give us... What okay, will they but do? will you... It, you can't march unless there's unless you see that there is hope, unless you see that there is something. I mean, we're working hard to build something, and unless you see that all of the good people coming together to say, listen... But it's the only way. Philip, is the only way. We have to have National Front, National Salvation, you call it what you want. But all the people, people need have to, to come together. Aside. Put, put your ego aside. Forget... If you're really in this, it's the only only way. That be. It's the only way. And that is why I was a bit offended when a, when a political party leader said that she doesn't want anybody, she's alone and so on. This is madness. Nobody can do it alone to save this country. It, 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 it's PM against the US. It has to be that. And but, until but you could these, do that. These that these finances that this PM have, they they they're vicious. Yeah, they, yeah, this, this this that's going on now is a different type they of will politics. Turn overnight. Their finances, their investors, they will turn overnight once they see grass is green on the other side or perceive it to be so. That's that's the nature of the people. Do you think that Keith Rowley knows what he's doing? I am a good question. And I am sometimes disillusioned over the fact I don't think so. I believe that it's a government by VAPS. You wake up in the morning and you do X. And for the money you do Y. This is my feeling. I, I look at the size. And I remember when you accused point. your government of policy on the hoof. And that's exactly what he's been doing. If you go to the PM manifesto, as painful as, as it is to go to go through, yeah. you look and see how a nation can be lied to. People listen to Faris al Rawi's promises the night before elections. And he, the things that they were saying that were going to happen in the next five years, not one of those things. In yeah. fact, the opposite occurred. We've seen, we, we've, we've seen that Keith Rowley says one thing when it is convenient and does something completely opposite again that's right. if it's convenient to that's, him. That's the, only and consistency he has. that's the only consistency he has of saying one thing and doing something completely different. Like, for example, I want to repeat to you again, I am not going to close down petrol train. And those of you who went to the fridge and didn't hear what I say, I'm saying again, I am not going to close down petrol train. He said those words. And then what happened? So that, that's the style of the guy. Right. I think now that people have seen, and I mean, this PNM march, eh, they march hard, they march from 2012, they march. The loss that, that Patrick Manning suffered in 2010. Ten almost destroyed the party and then the local government election two months later was well, that was July 25th that eviscerated them further I mean they couldn't get themselves in order but if, if the party if it wasn't for section 24 because that was the only thing that gave them something to stand upon yeah. and then the madness of email gate that turned out to be complete fabrication so now Again, who do you go to? We've had a situation where a chief magistrate accused a chief justice and a chief justice, and that became a matter that reached as far as the Privy Council. Yeah, yeah. And when we get inside the court, the chief magistrate no longer wanted to talk. I mean, 
it is all about accusation. Marlene say, Kamala say. <laughs> that's, how, that's how the country has been run. And I tell you again, I, I, I want to say to you, and no, no offense, I admire your energy, I admire your faith, I admire the hope that you have for the country, but there are times even me, at my age, I become disillusioned when I see that it's Philip against the U.S. It's Philip alone talking. It's Philip alone writing. Philip alone speaking. I pick up my, my phone on the morning of the storm. I listen to you talking about the storm, about, about what you would have done if you were there, and so on. I say to myself, the guy is making sense. But who is listening? Who is acting? Philip, I don't know how, you, how strong you are, but you have to be very strong. Right, to be able to survive. We have to find some way to donate a hundred tons of sand. The regional corporations have bars but no sand. I, 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 I hear that they have bars but no sand. That was right? madness. And then it's that was it's madness. It's if that had happened under another government, oh, Faris Harari would have oh, pulled all the hair out his head. They have sand but no bars and bars and no sand. He would be on Fazir's right? show anymore. I'm telling, I'm telling you, you compared something to 9-11 and Fazir said you're being ridiculous now. I'm telling you, that's the, that. But it was convenient for them then. And the country has been conned into believing that was the salvation from the people. So let's talk about the system then. Because if Keith Rowley is able to commit open treason, because that is what email gate was, if, they, if they've proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that there was nothing there, and that Keith Rowley by his own actions, because the one thing that struck me as odd was that you have this urgent and pressing document that says somebody is going to murder somebody else. And you don't tell the person. And you don't make a report. To what's it? You haven't gone to the police. And you hold it for six for months. Six months? For six months you hold that? What kind of national are you? That for six but, but, months. But do you think that he that he telegraphed that he knew it was nonsense? No, I'll show, I'll show you. By the fact that he did nothing. If you could. you could call Denise Ren name, you could call up Gary Griffith name and all kind of stuff, right? Because you have parliamentary privilege. But didn't he telegraph that the fact that he didn't warn Denise Ren or that he didn't go to the police, wasn't that him telegraphing that he knew it was nonsense? He didn't go to the president or the public. He didn't go to the police. He didn't go to, to, to the people who, who he said were involved. Nobody. And for six months, he kept it. For six months. Therefore, from day one, any four-year-old four, four child would tell you that this has to be a sham. But as Gary Griffith, I said, if you are saying that you're closing email gate, you understand you have to open treason gate. Because now you have to investigate who was involved in email gate, what was the intention, and prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. Because now there are rumors I have heard, people have said to me, that what they tried to pass off as email gate was actually a security intelligence apparatus sweep of the government that they passed on to the opposition, which is open treason. That's hung from the neck until dead treason. As good as Gary is, and I like him very much, as good as he is, you won't see treason gate. You won't see treason gate, my friend. Right? As good as he is, and I say I like him, you will not see treason gate. Treason gate means the collapse of the government. You won't see that. They make a lapse, you know, but not for treason. Kidrow who said it was in his mailbox. Yeah. Farris said he trusted the whistleblower who gave it to him. All of these open clues that this that was conflicted. all for it, it was ridiculous. So so why why was it allowed to go as far as it went? But I just told you why ago because this is they, they say Gary is one of my Gary's Gary, you say like Gary. Gary is one of my best friends. Right, cool. I work closely right. with Gary. But we fall out over things and and, and one, it, that, not wrong with that. one of the things we fell out over was I was the only person when Keith Rowley was appointing Gary Commissioner of Police. I asked, has Keith Rowley retracted the statement that he said Gary Griffith was conspiring to murder Denise Ren? I remember that. I, I, I read that, I saw that. Gary gave vexed with me. Yeah, but I saw that. Because, you know, in China today, everybody rushing to congratulate him to make sure they're in his good graces. But I wanted to know, because it's his name. And he has now the, the, the ridiculous situation of being both the commissioner of police, appointed by a prime minister, who, when he was opposition leader, accused him of being a murderer. Mm -hmm. this, this is the country you live in. So the system that we have of government doesn't allow because I mean I look at the pressure that the president of the United States gets put hello, under hello 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 from the moment he hello. is make a phone, let me make a phone call huh? the last one here is a phone call to, to, in, to Ukraine the last one he's under the microscope 
and from the moment you're sworn in, they don't let you go. There's no letting go. There's no letting go. You're under the microscope. Here. Why would Trinidad and Tobago have a situation where a situation like AV oil, something as simple as that? I remember when Bill Clinton got the Middle East, Yasser Arafat, and I think it was Perez at the time, to shake hands. Simon Perez, yes. And it was on the Whitehall lawn, and it was the world was tuning in. And as soon as they opened it for questions, the first question, is it true that Monica Lewinsky has address? <laughs> world peace. We are on the brink of world peace. But we want to know about Monica Lewinsky's address because you're the president of the United States and they take that seriously. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Though, of course, I remember my, one of my favorite um, presidents. Eh? Okay, yeah. One of my favorite presidents. But we all have our weaknesses at times. We, we know. But let me ask you something. And since you, of course, you have to be so bold to ask you. Push up. Push your head. You, you turn the interview now. And, 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 for one question. You are the interviewer. Go to 2020. Come 2020, whether it is September, October, never, never. What state will this country be in in a year's time? Where we, what, what, what will we have working better then than today? They're blowing bubbles. They're blowing bubbles at the level of like that OWT is a big bubble. That's a bubble. That's a bubble, right? They're blowing bubbles at people and they're trusting that people are not going to realize that it's a bubble that's going to pop off the election and you'll be left holding what holds a bubble together. Yep. So I I think that we're at a place now where if something better, we're at a tipping point. And if something better doesn't come along for people, to, because I think that the mass of Trinidad and Tobago is so fed up that of is true. what went on. That before. is true. And I think that they're looking for something to put their hope and their faith in. That also is true. Yeah. I think that there are so many good people in this country who have demonstrated the ability to get things done. I think that the public, without even knowing they're craving it, they're craving to see that new hero arrive. And believe me, you're on target. You're on target there. You're on target there. And I'm saying to you here this afternoon, you, you don't have much time. There's not much time, my friend. Until that hero, so to speak, comes forward, or heroine, if you want, comes forward. There's not much time. By using hero to say a, a, a new organization. Well, okay, fine. It I, doesn't I, have to be wrapped up I in mean a personality. I mean a person. I mean a, yeah. person. I mean a person. Hero could be an institution, organization, whatever it is. But I'm saying to you that until that happens. We've been in a political conversation in this country since Manning's second term. Yeah. yeah. Trinidad and Tobago has been in a heightened political climate from since then. And everything has gone on since. And... I think people have found some voice. Enough. But I want to say, and, yeah, and you're right, enough. because, but, but the reason I think not enough is the same reason I think when people say if Chinese worked harder, they'd get more money, I say it's the other way around. If Chinese had more stake in their jobs, if the value of the money that they got making sandwiches for Subway could have paid their bills and put their children to school and take care of their medicals, they're not going to fart around with the job. Yeah. But but the job barely gets you to the job every day. And I think that Trinidadians politically are so now jaded and cynical that that that, that they, they celebrate. I remember this guy sang a song with Jamin still. Yeah. And it was to point at us and ironically, we jumped to that. We jumped to that. Yes, we jumped to that. We jumped to be really And it's not that we didn't know. Yeah, we, because, we knew. Yeah, but we didn't care. We didn't care. We were singing. Philip, if you know the treasury man, could be no. And it's still like here. The jamming still. And that's the whole point. That song epitomized the entire message that your country needed. But it was a party fed song to dancing. Let me tell you something. If you have a chance to find how many young people highly educated, unemployed, it will blow your mind. It's sad. It will blow your mind. It's sad. I talk to people, not as much as you, but I talk to people on a daily basis. People come to me with their problems and I hear people say things and, and somebody coined the phrase, we have a working poor in this yes, country yeah. that are literally barely getting by. There are people who are one missed paycheck 
away from living in their car or on the streets. That's right. Yeah. And it's a large number of people. Our economy is in a mess. I keep asking what's wrong with our dollar. Mm-hmm. I keep asking why it is that people who dig a hole in New York City for $15 an hour and people who dig a hole in Trinidad for $15 an hour can't access the same amount of goods and services or even close. Or even close, it takes one hour work digging a hole in New York City to buy two meals. It takes a day and a half to buy one meal in Trinidad. Why that disparity in a country this pregnant with resources, this rich, this perfectly located on the planet? I mean, Tropical Storm Karen is an aberration. <laughs> It's an aberration. It is. It is. Storms, it is. weather patterns don't, don't, don't form come so come low. Come here, don't they, don't, come here, they don't form so low off of Africa. To reach here, the planet spins in a certain direction. Yes, and true. the normal spin of the planet takes a weather from the even Barbados, Dominica. That is low. Yeah. So we don't even have storms and we weather blessed, to worry. We are perfectly we are located we between North, Central, and South America. That's a massive market. Why are we not trying to attract businesses? Why everything is oil and gas? Why are we not trying to attract businesses here? Labor-intensive business, because there will always be labor-intensive business that creates work, job opportunities for our people and give them hope and opportunity and get out of the way. Why no government wants to do that? And I ask you this because, because it's important, because I think that goes to the heart of why our people are so jaded, so cynical about politicians. Yep. And that makes it even, makes it very tough for people like you. I have one serious question to ask you. Though. Uh-huh. You were Minister of National Security. Yeah. Why we've not yet secured the borders of this country? Uh, it's tough for like a train. And I'll tell you that to, to come up with that, as credit, she had bought 12 um, Coast Guard vessels. 12. And those vessels were supposed to patrol the waters and so on. We, of course, I left, well, I was, left, I was pushed out of the ministry mere weeks after that happened. But those 12 vessels remained, when she lost the election, remained in... in oh, that's uh, good. That's correct. And they were just cannibalized. In fact, I'm hearing now that they don't even have, have um, fuel to, get, to put in there. No fuel, so. uh, 12, you know. No, no corn beef to make and so 12, now. and they, they were down there. And, they, and, and, and nobody seemed to believe it. I said, listen, my was a put, put coastal police stations and defense force troops. I called five places. I said, Matlock, Cedrus, Erin, Ikakos. And so I, sat, I sat with yeah. people from former people who were involved in that sort of business, um, national security. And the idea of the maritime security wall, the repurposing yep. of the oil barges three miles out at sea to create the ring and the virtual wall. Since then, we've had the development of un- unmanned aerial vehicles. We have sonar boys that could seriously close down the borders and, and, and prevent anything being able to just drive up into Chattanooga. Why no government is taking that on? Why after the Scott Drug Report of the 80s that showed so many people in Chattanooga were involved in the most horrific drug trafficking to the world. We were known as a narco pipeline. Why no commission of inquiry into the drug trade? We were in our infancy then and they thought that that Justice Scott report could have collapsed the country. Mm-hmm. Why no conversation now? Why, why is the government being allowed to do business with people of questionable repute? But you just told me that there's the perception out there that a certain class of people are the drug laws in the country. And if that is true, if that position is correct, you can understand why nothing is being done to harm them. Because the fact is that this is, they are saying that these so-called Mr. Biggs, for a better word, are the guys who control the drug, drug trade. And therefore, it would mean, if that is so, that there are persons in government who have vested interest in all of this. And therefore, it, it, would, it, would, it, would, it would do them no good. No good whatsoever. We've had 400 million worth of cocaine go north of Virginia. Yeah. We've had the 100 million dollars to Canada. We've had 600 million in Monas. We had a billion dollars found in the hull of a yacht outfitted in Chagaramas found off of Spain. And that's just what's been found. So we're talking billions of dollars of drugs. You. Why are we not dealing with that go, as an issue? Let me go to the Look at the Minister of National Security's stepdaughter. She was found with a, a small mountain of drugs. Where, where's the conversation on the importers? Good question. Let me tell you something. Let me go something that is even easier and simpler than what you said. 
You remember that a, a, a chocolate of of chicken, um, not chickens, or car parts. Car parts came in here yeah, yeah, yeah. with two million dollars US. Oh, that's plywood. Ply, plywood, sorry. Plywood. Two million dollars US. What happened to that? Who did it come to? Where, how, how could that come be imported just so? Where's the six hundred million dollars worth of cocaine that was seized on Monas? Okay. Where's that? Where's that? And those are things people have to, people have not been asking. People but have having held such high positions in public office, why does the system not naturally take care of those questions? Why doesn't because in other jurisdictions, from the moment a matter becomes a matter, like I explained to people, the person on the 911 call has responsibility for your life till the ambulance arrives. The ambulance has responsibility for your life till you reach the emergency room. And the emergency room has responsibility for your life until you are checked into the hospital. Why isn't it like that in Trinidad and Tobago? Why once a ticket is created for a matter that it is not followed through to a conclusion? How are things just allowed to die? Because of the not, of the not national the tragedy of this country. Nobody in this country, Philip, I shouldn't say nobody, but very few persons in this country are really interested in the matters which you speak about here. I'm to be honest with you. I tell you, you are, you are in some ways an, an exception. There are very few persons who are concerned with about, they're concerned about bread and butter issues, about carnival, about the TKI and the, and the cricket, and that's it, you know, and that's it. And then the, something, something personally affects them. Yes, but beyond that, no. We have become a country of. But we've mobilized people. We mobilized in 1986. We mobilized. 2010 was a celebration. Yeah. People were celebrating. We mobilized to go to Germany. People find their patriotism. Oh, I find that it is just waning now. That people just. Right. Um, and why is winning? I know people say. We were not really uh, we yeah. races yeah. before. Yeah. It's not like before, you know. Yeah. I mean, Kishan Walcott. I mean, we're not taking it on. We're not. Cynicism is appalling, boy. I, I see some appalling. cyclists win some award, break some record, mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't yeah, care. No, big, yeah. no big thing. No big thing. No big thing. The is just holding their corner, yeah. hustling and grinding. I, I, I. Do you think? And I ask you one. I, I said this before, but I want to ask you again because, do you think that it is too late? to get real representation. Do you think that it's too late to tap in? Is the, is the wellspring of patriotism dead? No, it's not dead, but it's dying. It's dying. And it's not too late, but it's coming close to her. If ten months, not, if six months from now, and that, that, that is the maximum, if six months from now, we don't get our act together, help me help this country. I say, I say that unashamedly, help me help this country. If six months from now, all of us, people like you and all of us and so on, don't get our work together, help, help this country. You have no idea how bad we are, you know. All the things I said this afternoon, I'll tell you this today, all you have said so far, these are the tip of the iceberg. There are some things you can't see on air, there are things that, things that you know, and you feel, and you hear people talk about, which you can't see. But if I could be given something like immunity to say the things I know. You see? And I'm sure that that is a joke to what you know. That is, that is correct. And therefore I'm saying, give you immunity and give me two now. And let's both talk Parliamentary about, you know, privilege, I think talk, they call it. Parliamentary talk, talk, privilege. Talk, talk, let's say things we know. Let's fix it. Right? Let's, let's, get, let's get it but team together. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I like six, that. Idea. Six months from now is the limit. We have to find solutions. And there are too many people out there who are angry. No, but I, again... Eh, Silently I'm, angry. No, but you see, and, and what I find is really hypocritical about Trinidad and Tobago, that the same people that would denigrate you, yeah. take you apart, mm -hmm. would give other people a pass. For, you see, for the, worse... For, for you, that's right. That's right. They would know. They would see and don't see. You are so correct, my friend. How do you explain that? How do you explain that? And that is that is a real situation you talk about there, right? And, the, and there are big people as well as small people. Just will not denigrate a person, another Jack one other citizen. They, they won't do that. 
because for them, they have they, they have more benefits to, to, to get from the other personal persons. That was that's all. I want to ask you one question. You think it's a race thing? No, sure not. If Jack Warner was white. Philip, if I were white, I wouldn't be sitting here. You think they would have touched you? Don't you think touch they me. Would, if my eyes were things, blue. If your eyes were blue. If my eyes were blue. <laughs> you, you crazy? I'm if honest. My eyes were blue. If my eyes were blue. I tell you, don't, don't touch me. It's still yeah, firing yeah. on all cylinders. But, yeah. but let them, of course, go ahead. So you think that it might be that? And could it still be that we have a country where a black man will be given a harder time than a man of... Color. It's a fact. Good hair. It's a fact. What Chris Rock called good hair. Yeah, it's a fact. We we tend, we tend of course, to, to try to keep it under the quiet, so to speak. Colonialism still dictates how we behave. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. It doesn't help us in our national security because they will be, we, we, were more, we were more secure then. But it tells us how we behave, our way of thinking. Our education system is still is still a way to get what those those um, those times, and therefore it's not easy at this point in time. People, of course, who will, t- will tell you that they have the prestige schools, for example, and look and see who will be going there and who will be making twenty percent and so on. You, you have to look, look into those and you see what's happening. Why would we have prestige schools though, when all schools? get teachers from the same Ministry of Education, the same system, they get the same funding, they have the same curriculum. Tranquility too. Why, why would, well, <laughs> why would, but, but, but why would the education system be two-tiered when everybody's supposed to be funded? We're spending $4.5 billion a year on education. And that you could save about $2 billion if we started to use the cloud, if we started to digitize the books and save the children the scoliosis, if we if we started to use proper leveraging GPA zone the schools, made the schools 10-year schools, and made the teachers, the principals accountable for the performance of the children. We could change that. Why haven't we done that? Why do we still want a society where some benefit and others go to a school where the teachers are absent, the class is non-existent, and violence prevails? Why? Why is that still our condition? 15 years into social media, why, why seeing the world and how the world works, why hasn't or haven't Trinidadians and Tobagonians woken up to wanting a better nation for themselves and their loved ones? All those questions you have asked, all those things you have asked are relevant questions, very relevant, but there wouldn't be any questions that would, mm-hmm. that would of course, excite the powers that be today. You know why? Because they have a vested interest in keeping the things as they are. The books, for example. The bubbles. Oh, the books. Why digitize books when the publishers there and the printers and so on could give you a kickback? Why? I hear parents talk about books that they're not, they, they can't, not even using. They can't pass a book from one child to the no. next because you have a new edition that changed three words. And, and three words are sometimes are common with waffle stuff. And that's if we system. know these things and we could talk about these things, why is the average Trinbagonian content to just sit and let this be our condition? Because of the malaise that exists, my friend. I tell you a while ago, don't touch the carnival, don't touch the, cr- the cricket, and don't touch, don't touch um, um, the, 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 the fret of the party. That's all. That's the, the, that is all that matters to too many Trinities today. Too many. They live for the moment. You, but, but Venezuela had that similar culture, and look at Venezuela now. And that's why, that's why. Why should I just not ask Venezuelans, where are you today? What, the fat and the party, and the, what, I mean, Venezuelans, they party more than us. Not South today. American people, they did. They, they. Not today. Not today. Not today. You know what, we in this country, and I, I guess you would, I would not, I don't understand what you would not agree with, I tell you. Because of where so I sometimes wonder, if a benevolent despot shouldn't wait for five years. People say that. People say that. People talk about that. People talk about going back to the Queen. Yeah. And I wonder why we're so irresponsible with our democracy. Because that's the whole reason. That's the whole reason. Democracy here is a farce, you know. It's a misnomer. We aren't really democratic here. Let's face it, Philip. We are not. If we had recall as law, right. ah. if you could have ah. fired your member of parliament, ah. yes. you think that would make a change? That would make a change. That would make a change. So a government coming to office that makes that one change make will automatically put members of parliament to work. And make a second change. Have fixed date for elections. Have fixed date for elections. If you do that, 
every member of parliament and prime minister would get it act together. So you know that, of course, the US, the US, you know that in November you have elections and so on, is there, you, that's fine, fix it. Right. Not a man say have it in his back pocket and all kind of foolishness. Right? We still right. such a little that, banana that, republic. That's correct. Jack, it was such a pleasure having you here. Give me your closing comments. Well, I would tell you, um, I was happy to be here. I hope I can come again sometime soon. Now, this can't be the last. Sometime this can be soon. the first in the But I tell you, if you could help to change this country in, in one small way through this medium, you will have achieved a, done a great job. It's not easy. Philip, it would not be easy. But if this could help me change the country, my friend, I would like to be on board. All right? Thank you. Pleasure. Right. So that was a one-on-one -on -one exchange, plain talk, with Austin Jack Warner. You got a lot of stuff. You got a lot of information. Plenty of mind food. Something to sit and chew on and deliberate. Why do we, people of this country, a nation so blessed, so fortuitous, why are we so irresponsible with this country? We talk about God as a trinity and we yeah. say that as a joke. Why are we taking God for granted then? If God bless you with a country this beautiful, why not take care of it and make it better? We have an opportunity to rescue it before it sinks. And I think that we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have to wake up to that responsibility because we, as Jack said, are running out of time. That's right. Six months maximum. So this has been Plain Talk. Make sure when you view it to share it, like it. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Um, I'd like to say a special thanks to Satish Ramsaran, the head of Pep Media and one of the driving forces behind the Plain Talk show. And see you when next we see you. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.